Hi folks, it's good to be with you. Uh, love to everybody out there. This is uh, Jason and uh, it's good to be with you. I just want to share a few things with you today. Um, it's quite late. It's getting on for nearly uh, 12 o'clock in the evening. Um, the reason why I'm doing the Bible study so late, we just finished a Bible study in the house. Um, we've restarted the Bible study. Uh, and basically it's just a house group and people come and we had six people uh, tonight and I want to share the Bible study that we did uh, for you so that you get a blessing from it as well it, it, you know if, if you feel like you want to study the Word of God um, yeah so I just want to share one or two things really with you uh, if that's okay uh, it's good to be with you so love to everybody out there don't forget my website jasonburnspreacher.com uh, there's loads of material on there. Twitter, just type in Jason Burns Twitter, Jason Burns Preacher, Twitter. My Twitter will come up, and there there are thousands of uh, links and videos and articles on apologetics. Some of the best apologists around today, Rabbi Zachariah. There's a lot of material there to really encourage you in your faith. On my Facebook, there's a lot of links to Bible preachers like Alistair Begg and Paul Washer and people like that. Then you have this YouTube channel, uh, and there's a lot of Bible teaching on here and apologetics and uh, stuff that we do at Hyde Park, etc. So, yeah, so we also have uh, a website of Royal Blood Ministries website and also Twitter and uh, YouTube channel, but we just haven't got time, me and Mike, to be doing stuff on there. But we hope at some time we can, hopefully we can get a bit of time to, to focus on that. Um, a couple of other issues and things, uh, somebody donated quite a, quite a few hundred pounds the other day. I was in Manchester preaching and somebody put an envelope in my hand and uh, gave me quite a few hundred pounds with the instruction for mobile speakers. So it means we're going to upgrade from what we've recently upgraded to, uh, we're going to upgrade even bigger. So I want to thank that brother for his kindness and generosity and uh, I want to thank the Lord for his goodness in, in providing and that's not just happened once it's happened twice uh, somebody gave me money uh, before Christmas and just come up to me and gave me a large quantity of money so I appreciate the, the pit that people have been giving and uh, I have used it and I, I am going to use it to, 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 with the instructions that were put uh, to the money. So the instruction was to get some mobile speakers. So hopefully next week we'll be investing in some more bigger mobile speakers. So thank you very much. Um, God is good and I really appreciate the encouragement. Uh, secondly, somebody gave their heart to the Lord uh, uh, this week, uh, somebody uh, came to know the Lord, so we thank the Lord for that. Uh, and thirdly, um, yeah, um, we're trying to build a team. I'd like to do church planting, but I don't have the people to do it or the resources to do it. But I, if I had the resources and the people... I would start to church plant in Muslim areas, uh, places like Blackburn, Dewsbury, uh, Bradford, uh, many, many Muslim areas uh, in the UK, but I don't have the resources. But if anyone ever sent me the resources and said, this is for church planting, I would immediately start work in doing church planting. So, but I don't have the resources. I would like to get a building. I'd like also to start a mission building in Manchester where I could start it to feed the homeless, help the homeless and also to um, to start training evangelists and missionaries and church planters uh, and a place where we can do church planting and a place that we can use as a church mission centre. This house is becoming like a church mission really uh, but it's getting too small so I'm eventually going to need a building uh, honestly, because uh, we've got missionaries coming over and I'd like more missionaries to come. 
uh, from from Holland if they if they would come. I'd like more people to come and stay and work as missionaries and, and evangelists in the UK. So it would be good if we could rent a house or rent a building or if we could buy a building um, and uh, use it as a mission center where people could come and stay with us for uh, six months, five months, however they want, however long they want, do mission work with us. And also um, where we can train people and where we can strategize and plan and go and send people out to do church planting uh, around the UK. The other thing I'd like to do is I'd like to uh, set up an apologetic centre and church at Hyde Park. Uh, but I need people who want to volunteer to do that, people who want to get trained and uh, we'll be taking a gazebo down there in, in the spring come summer and we'll, it'll be kind of like church in the park anyway. But it would be good if we could get people around to, to develop that ministry, uh, to develop an apologetics ministry there and a, and a discipleship ministry where we're seeing people converted and going into discipleship. Uh, so those are some things that, some areas that I'd like to pray about. I'd also like to go more to Europe. There's a trip organised or going to be organised in Spain. I'd like to go to not, uh, not only Europe, I'd like to go to India and Africa. So I'm, ask, I'm, I'm just telling you these things, if you could just pray about it uh, and pray that if these are of God, that doors would open. But uh, please pray about a building to rent as a mission station to do, put all the equipment. If I've got two speakers now, I'm going to get two more and they're going to be bigger. We haven't got the room to store them in this house, all right? We're having missionaries come, I'd like more missionaries come. So it's logical that if, if this work is going to build and grow, then eventually we're going to need to rent a house, a bigger house, or uh, a bigger, or, or rent a building. I do feel there's a need to help the homeless uh, in Manchester, but I don't have the resources. If I had the resources, I would rent a building, or if I had the resources to buy a building, I would buy a building in the centre of Manchester and I'd open it up to the homeless and we'd do a church plant come missionary society where we'd train missionaries and train evangelists to go out and church plant around the UK. And that, secondly, I'd like to go on church plant in Muslim areas. Thirdly, I'd like to go down into Hyde Park and plant a church there and train up apologies down there. And then also to do mission work in India and Africa and Europe. Uh, these are th things on my heart, but I haven't got the resources. And I, I, I thank the Lord for Frank and Kadeen and the work that what God's doing in their life and them, they're allowing me to, to work with them uh, in, in Europe. But uh, I pray that, just pray that God would open doors and, and God would uh, finance things more uh, in, in bigger projects. So I'm just asking for prayer really. Uh, we're getting a team coming slowly together in Manchester uh, so thank you for the prayers keep praying about that but I, I sense we're working more together things are getting better uh, so please pray about that uh, so thank you so much for your prayers uh, one or two other things uh, uh, you can pray about and um, um, I, I I was on the internet years ago and I wasn't well, I, I was not at my best. I was going through a breakdown and I made some videos that, that were fighting militant atheists and they were, they were, not, they were not good because they, they, I, was, I was coming from a broken heart, I was doing it in the flesh and um, I took the videos down, I, 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 I took them away and I, I got rid of them but because there are malicious people on the internet and people who are uh, uh, trolls and militant, militant in their aggression towards Christianity, uh, they, they kept those videos and they set up 
archive channels and things like that and they tried to blacken my name and I've tried to get these videos off but I can't get the videos off and I, if anyone could help me legally or help me in any way but uh, the people the person, particularly one person who's done it, has bullied me and I can't seem to uh, sort, sort it out because of the, the, the bullying, really. Um, basically, if, if I do anything, they'll do something to me. So, that, so, so I, all I can do is just continue to do what I'm doing. I don't want to antagonise that person. I just want to get on and preach the gospel and, and do what I'm doing. But it means that when people see my vid my videos, which are thousands of good videos, there are thousands of, there's literally hundreds of sermons, hundreds of apologetic material, there's loads of good, good material out there. But then there are some videos from the past years ago that are not, not wholesome, not coming from the flesh. And uh, the, the enemies of the gospel and people who, who don't realize that I wasn't well, uh, use that to try and blacken my name. So I just pray that you, anybody out there would understand if they see anything, any video that's not wholesome, that came from a bad place, they apologise for it, but it's not me. Uh, I wasn't well at the time uh, and there's nothing I can do about it at the moment. I don't have any, uh, any legal or proper support to be able to deal with YouTube or to deal with that particular person. Um, and I don't want to antagonise that person but by rights they should have compassion and understand that I wasn't well at the time so I'm just being honest with you uh, I try to I'm accountable I'm in local church I'm in my leadership team I do ministry with fellow brothers and sisters uh, and I do things in a proper uh, accountable way and I'm I'm well, I'm back to normal, I've been like that for quite, quite a few years now, uh, but I'm just being honest with you, okay. So if you could just pray that somehow God would sort it out, or if someone might come forward and who can approach that individual and, and, and sort them, ask them to, to kindly remove those videos. So, uh, yeah. Um, what else is there? That's it really, so we'll get on with the Bible study. Get on with the Bible study. So we turn to uh, Philippians chapter 3. Oh yeah, uh, just pray about police activity. Um, to wisdom for dealing with the police. I put a video about a police officer who approached me the other day. I've taken that video off uh, because we're doing a few inquiries, legal inquiries, um, about about that particular incident. Uh, but just pray. One of the worrying things about that situation is they were, they were doing surveillance covertly where they were they were in the distance. The, the particular officer was quite far away doing surveillance, looking on, making notes, secretly, okay? And uh, I've never seen that done by police officers before. Uh, I've known other street preachers to experience it, and when they've experienced it, that, that, that street preacher is extracted from the street, so it, it looks like there's some kind of possible uh, development of uh, the authorities desiring to get street preachers off the streets in Manchester. So if you could just pray about that um, and uh, yeah, just, just uh, pray about it because it is quite worrying really. Uh, because I, I've defended Sarah's free speech, I've defended Sight and uh, Atheist free speech, I've defended uh, people who whose free speech has been attacked, and I believe in free speech, so I don't think it's right for people to lose their free speech. Uh, and, uh, and uh, yeah, so I would defend your right to free speech, so I would ask you to, to bear my free speech and defend my free speech, and, 
and those were Christians to pray about our free speech is maintained. Uh, okay. So looking at Philippians chapter 3, it says in, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, is not irksome, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of concision. For we are the circumcision who worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus, have no confidence in the flesh, though I might also have confidence in the flesh. If any other man thinketh that he hath reasons for which he might trust in the flesh, I more circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecution, and the church touching the righteousness which is in the law blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Ye doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them uh, but refuse, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am comprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many be perfect, be thus minded, and if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, as to that which we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them who walk even as you have us, you have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their appetite, and whose glory is their shame, who mind earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which also we, we look for the Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. You shall change our lowly body, that it may be fashioned like his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. So, oh, the other thing as well, uh, I, 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 I am... Yaya Snow is on record of organising a debate with uh, a, a young up-and-coming apologist who's quite a brilliant scholar apparently, uh, who's the next Shabi Ali, young Shabi Ali. Uh, so he's organised a debate with me. Uh, he said he's going to confirm it uh, if this apologist is, is better because the, the, the apologist has some kind of mental, uh, uh, physical illness and has to see the doctor about medication, but if, if everything's okay and they're well and fit enough, they will debate me. So I'm hoping to hear from him uh, this week. So a debate uh, in February on the, uh, I think, uh, uh, reliability of the New Testament, I think it is. So we're looking at the text of the New Testament. I offer to debate as well on the Quran, but they don't want to, and I think that's, not intellectually honest, to be honest, but uh, they have to live with that. But, uh, but So pray about that, if that debate is to be on, that uh, we would do well for the Lord Jesus Christ. So verse 1, finally my brethren rejoice. So we're to rejoice, we're to be rejoyful. But in what? In the Lord. We're to put the Lord first. And this is the key for this chapter. You know, the question is, what is on your mind? What is the one thing that you're thinking about and looking to all the time? There was a story of a young boy of nine years of age and he, he was being taught how to do baseball and the coach came up to him and was wanted to give him advice and the boy said, no, I'm going to be a rich man. And he was saying, I, I don't really need to learn about baseball. I'm going to be a rich man. For that little boy... He was just thinking about one thing, being rich. What is the one thing that you're always thinking about? And if you're thinking about that thing, it's, it, 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 it's 
It's lost. It's done. It, it, it's not right. The one thing that you should be thinking about is here. Finally, my brethren, rejoice what in the Lord, to think about the Lord, to, to bring glory to him, worship him, adore him. Finally, my brethren, rejoice at the Lord to write the same thing to you. To me, indeed, is not irksome, but for you it is safe. In other words, he's saying, look, I've taught you the simplicity of Christ. I've taught you the gospel, but it's going to be safe if you keep to the gospel. And verse 2, beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. Beware of dogs. The Gentiles were called dogs. Now Paul is calling the Jews the dogs. The Jews who were self-righteous. The Jewish people, the Jewish Pharisees, who thought they had it all together, but they didn't. And he calls them dogs. And then he rubs their nose in it. Beware of evil workers. They're evil. And then he rubs their nose even more. He says, beware of the concision. And some translations say mutilation. And that's a term, that's about pagan idolatry, when the pagans mutilated their bodies to satisfy their gods. Paul is saying, look, you Judaizers, you are more or less like the pagans. And it's safe when we stick to the simplicity of the gospel. But when we go out of the simplicity of the gospel, we might as well be pagans, Paul saying. Verse 3, for we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. No, for we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit. We're to worship God in the spirit. Read Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 16. It talks about the circumcision of the heart. Yeah, the circumcision of the heart. That, that we're to be people of the spirit. We're to be people resting in Christ, not in religion. Verse 4, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man think that he hath reason for which he might trust in the flesh, I more. Paul is saying, look, you Judaizers, these people who are boasting about their religion, their religious achievements, he saying, look, I'm going to show you that I'm better than you at that, that I had, I had it all together as a religious person. But even though I had it all together as a religious person, it was dung. It was nothing compared to Christ. Verse 5, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisees. Circumcised on the eighth day. When you, when you circumcise, you're part of the Jewish family. So Paul, before he got converted, he put his trust in family. Second of the stock of Israel, he put his trust in the nation of Israel. Uh, Benjamin, of, uh, in the tribe of Benjamin, he put his trust in in being in a particular tribe again family of the law as uh, hebrews as touching the law a pharisee he was a man steeped in the word of god concerning zeal persecuting the church he was zealous you can go to church you can know your bible you can be zealous but if you don't have christ as the center it's dung it's worthless it's religion the seven but what things were gain to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Even though he had all these religious things, they were nothing compared to Jesus Christ. Ye doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them as refuse that I may win Christ. You see, for Paul, Christ was his treasure. Christ was everything to him. Christ is who he reveled in. Christ is who he loved. Christ is, if, is the one that loved, he loved the Christ because the Spirit of God was in him, filling him, refreshing him, renewing him. And he loved Christ. He adored Christ. He worshipped Christ. Christ was all to him. And it wasn't based on religion. It wasn't based on his family. It wasn't based on his religion. It was based on being a man justified in Christ and renewed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Not man's ability, not man's achievement, but the achievement of all of God, that God justified him by the blood of Christ 
and that God put the Spirit of God in him. And it was all of God, but all of God, he worshipped, he loved Christ above all things. What do you love? What do you love? What is, a, what is the one thing that you love more than Christ? You need to be set free from it and love Christ more. That I may know him. And notice, and be found in him not having my own righteousness which is of the law, but that which is through faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. He's talking about justification by faith. We have to talk about doctrine. And the doctrine here is sonship that we're sons and daughters of the living God through the blood and the atonement of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are washed in the blood of the Lamb and we are saved and justified because of all that Christ has done for us. What a saviour. Verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of the sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Verse 10, that I may know him. What is it that you want to know more of? What is it that you want to know more of? Do you want to know more about Christ above everything else? And the power of his resurrection, and here it is, and the fellowship of his sufferings. Every child of God that serves God, seeks God, will suffer persecution. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. We will be persecuted if we follow Christ made conformable unto his death, that we die to self. If by any means I might, verse 11, unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that from which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. What is Christian maturity? Christian maturity is starts when we realise we have not got it made. Christian maturity starts when we realize that we need to learn more, that we need to grow more, that we need to go forward more. That's Christian maturity. Isn't that wonderful? That when we come to realize that we need Christ and we need to grow more, that is maturity. But if you say, mm -mm, I've arrived, mm -mm, I'm the man, mm -mm, I'm the woman, that's not Christian maturity. That's pride. Europe, uh, and so we need to be saying, no, there's more to learn, there's more to know about Christ. Verse 13, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward unto the things which are before. You've got to let the past go. The past glories and the past failures have got to go. Don't hang on to the past, let it go. Some of you are crushed by the failures of the past. And you've got to let them go. They're under the blood, they're sanctified, they're washed, you're clean, you're okay, it's gone. So let it go. But sometimes the past haunts you. Sometimes the past comes up to bite you in the face, to, 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 to slap you in the face, to, to tell you that you're no good, to tell you that you're a waste of space, to tell you that you can't do this or you can't do that, or you don't deserve this or you don't deserve that. But that's the past and the past is under the blood of the Lamb. And that goes for your achievements too. You might have achieved a great deal in the things of God, but you can't rest on the past and say, oh yes, when I was when I was ten when I was twenty years old, I'm I'm eighty now. I'm not eighty, but imagine a person who's eighty. I'm eighty and I remember when I was twenty there was a revival. Oh, what a wonderful revival it was. But you're always looking to the past. There's new things to know about God now. There's new movements of the Spirit of God now. There is new power now. There is a work to do now. Stop looking to the past, but move on. Even if you failed, even if you've had great things that have happened to you, time to move on and go forward in the things of God. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal it unto thee. Nevertheless, as to that which we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together at me, and mark them who who talk even as ye have for an example. Uh, for many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. So Paul is saying, you know, he says this, verse 17, Brethren, be followers together of me. Leadership is 
it, it, it is, is not about just do this, do that. I'm a leader, so you've got to do this, you've got to do that. I'm a leader, I'm the boss, you've got to do what I tell you to do. That is leadership. Leadership is this. Bre be, brethren, be followers together of me. Paul is saying, look, follow me, look at my life. I'm modeling what it is to be a leader. I'm a servant, I'm modeling what it is to be a leader. I'm pursuing Christ, I'm seeking Christ. That's what a leader is. A leader is besotted with Christ. A leader loves Christ, that's leadership. And you're saying to people, look at me, I'm following Christ, now you follow me. This is where I'm going, that's leadership. But a leader who says, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, you gotta do this, that's not leadership, that's dictatorialness. That's, 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 that's uh, uh, putting people down, okay? You, yeah, you've gotta tell people what to do if you're a leader. Sometimes you gotta say, well, you, you gotta turn up here and there are certain responsibilities that you've got that you, uh, you say to the person, I, I have certain responsibilities and you know, I'm, I'm shepherding the flock or uh, I have to uh, look after these young people and I, and I need X, Y, Z from you and these are the rules, these are the basic regulations, these are, these, these are the guidelines and you've got to stick to those rules and if you don't, I'll have to tell you, etc. Uh, and you need to be accountable to me because I'm the leader. You need to do all those, yes. But they should not follow you unless you are modelling Christ in your life. Then they'll follow you and if you ask them to do stuff, they will do it because they see that you do the same thing. You've got to model leadership before you start telling people what to do. And that, that goes for marriage. You know, when you think about it, when, when Paul talks about marriage in Ephesians, uh, he talks about the, the head of the family is the man. But if you notice, the man doesn't get to be the head just automatically that he's the head and that's it. He does everything says everything, you've got to do it. No, uh, the man has to model the love of Christ, just as Christ loved the church, so you love your wife. So in other words, leadership is about modeling who Christ is and following Christ, that's leadership. And when people see that m leadership style, they will want to follow you and you can lead them. And it's true, you know, uh, you know when you you watch these documentaries on the SAS and you watch the documentaries on uh, army units in the Second World War, what, what comes out is the officers that are the greatest leaders and do the most effect are the ones that love their troops and will do anything for the troops and who have served their troops. So the soldiers like, you know what, I'm going to follow this guy. I'm just going to follow this guy. I love this guy. This, this guy's amazing. I love the guy. The guy will do anything for me and I'm going to do anything for him. That, and that's why they follow the officer because they know the officer is watching their back. And if you want people to fit into your vision in your church or, or your mission or anything that you're doing, love people and minister to people and serve the people and model Christ to them. And then they'll follow you. Isn't that amazing? That's wonderful. Scripture is powerful and scripture has the answer to everything. God is good. So let's go on. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their appetite, whose glory is their shame, who mind earthly things. So there are people who are in the church and they seem spiritual. They've got very religious uh, morals, they're commendable, they, they know the word, this is the context, they know the word, they're moral, very moral, and they, they have it all together, they have all the pedigree, they're looked up to, they're respected, but the reality is they're earthly minded, they're sensual, and they're looking for earthly pleasure, and they have a court of religiosity a respectability on them and Paul is saying look it, 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 it's a tragedy and, 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 and it breaks my heart you know don't break God's heart don't settle for mediocrity don't settle for the mediocre don't nestle in this world and feed on the pleasures of this world and miss 
the greatest pleasure of all of, of knowing Christ personally. Notice verse 20, for our citizenship is in heaven, from which also we look to the Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, excuse me, again, the Lord is at the centre all the time, he's the centre. The Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, but it says here, for our citizenship is in heaven. Our citizenship is in heaven. Why did he say that? Because in Philippi, they boasted about their citizenship. They were a Roman colony, colony, and they were an important Roman colony, and they gloried in being citizens of the Roman Empire. Paul saying, no, 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 you're becoming earthly minded, glory in being a citizen of Jesus Christ. Isn't that amazing? Then he says, for our citizenship is in heaven, from which also we look, what? For the saviour of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you know, listen to this. If you put anything, I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again, but in a different way. If you put anything above Christ, then you've missed it. If you put speaking in tongues, uh, doing miracles, doing healing, uh, if you put money, sex, power, drugs, if you put religion, if you put knowing the Bible, if you put uh, anything above Christ, then it's dung. You've missed it. It's dung. Because you've missed the main thing. It was. It's all about Christ. And we can so easily do good things, but then be puffed up with pride and think that that is what it's all about. And it's not. What's, what's, what we're to focus on is relishing Christ, adoring Christ, Honouring Christ and following Christ and making Christ the centre of our lives. For our circumcision is in heaven, from which we look for the Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change a lowly body, that it may be fashioned like this glorious body, according to the working which he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. So, scriptures that you can look at, are uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7. This is about making Christ your treasure. 2 Corinthians 4 7, Matthew 6 19, Matthew 6 21, James chapter 5 verse 2 and 3, Matthew chapter 13 verse 45 uh, to uh, 40 to 45, Hebrews chapter 11 uh, verse 26. You could look at Romans 10 9, Colossians 3 17, Philippians 2 9 to 11. Revelation 17, 14, 1 Corinthians 8, 6, 2 Corinthians 4, 6. And all these verses are directly and indirectly get us to think about the greatness of Christ and the majesty of Christ and the wonder of Christ and to focus on Him. My friend, you can't do it on your own. My friend, if you've come to an end in yourself and you, 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 you can't seem to get it together, you can't seem to break the sin patterns in your life. You can't seem to get victory. You can't seem to get go forward. You seem to go forward, but then take two steps back. Uh, what is the answer? The answer is to allow the Holy Spirit to take over your life. That's the answer. The answer is only unless God moves and changes your life, you'll not change. So you have to call upon the Lord and ask people around you to pray for you. And as you do that, the Spirit of God will fill you and anoint you afresh. And you'll have a fresh vision of who Jesus is. And, and then you'll be focusing more on Christ. And you'll begin to get victory in your life. And in the end, it's all about Christ. And He gets the glory. And He's the one that does it. He's the one that does it, my friend. It's not what you can do. You can't do diddly squat, okay? It's what God can do. And it's God that changes you. It's God that gives you that new life. And you just got to call out to God and say, Lord, I, I need to move forward in my life. I need victory in my life. And, and, and cry out to him and ask people to pray for you. And when the Spirit of God touches your life, you give all the glory to him and it will be... His honour and prayers that you will live for. So let's pray. And I hope that's been a blessing to you. So God bless you. And take care. God bless. Father, we thank you for this day. 
And uh, Father, we just thank you that there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ, that we have no hope in ourselves. We have no strength in ourselves. We're nothing. But everything that we have is like a table lavished with all the blessings. You lavish your grace, you lavish your love, you lavish it more than we could ever, ever think. You satisfy our soul. Oh, Jesus, what a wonderful saviour. To be ravished by you and we are ravished not by anything that we have done. Not by our own might, not by our own power, not by anything that we can do. But it's all of your grace, all of the grace of God that Christ would die for us. That we're justified and because we're justified, you sanctify us. So Father, thank you. Be with my brothers, sisters and sisters who hear this word. Refresh them and renew them and strengthen them and bring life everlasting into them. And bless them and may they adore you. May they worship you. May they honour you in all things. And we give the prayers and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You've got to keep going. You've got to keep going. And you call upon the name of the Lord and ask him to give you the power of the Holy Spirit. And he will give you the power of the Holy Spirit. And pray and God will come. God is on your side. God is moving in your life. And you will get the victory. And all praise and all glory will go to him. God bless you. God bless. Take care.